Hola chicos, ¿qué tal? ¿Estáis bien? ¿Regular? ¿Fatal? Bueno, espero que estéis bien. Today we are here with our lesson, our Spanish lesson via YouTube. I hope you enjoy. Make sure you are pausing the video throughout when told to do so, so that you can complete the tasks accompanied with the worksheet. So, our title. ¿Cómo es tu casa? ¿Cómo es tu piso? And our learning objective is to describe a photo of someone's house and location using the verb estar. We'll come back to these questions in a bit, but let's recap first of all on last lesson, which was about describing ourselves and other people using ser, to be. So for your starter, go to the worksheet, translate sentences 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and complete the challenge if you choose to accept it. To give you a bit of support, we've got some vocabulary here in the blue box. Pause the video, go to the worksheet, give it a go. Fabuloso! Ok, vamos a ver las respuestas. Number one, his, her best friend is quite thin and quite nice, or you could say kind. Make sure you've got quite there twice because it's said twice in the original sentence, that being bastante. Number two, his, her best friend is very good looking and very tall. Number three, his, her best friend is a little fat. A bit harsh, but there we go. Number four, his, her best friend is very short and also very thin. And number five, a lovely description of their best friend. His, her best friend is very ugly, very fat and very short and also very intelligent. Hmm, not sure I'd be happy being described as that. Your challenge was to tell me how do you know if it is a boy or a girl they are describing. And we know that if the adjective ends in an O or an A. O being for boys, A being for girls. Excellent. So bit of cultural information for you here. We've got six photos on the left hand side of your screen and these are typical houses and flats that you might find across Spain or even in the Mediterranean because in Spain they more often than not have flats. They're very much a flat culture and rent a lot more than we do. We are more people who buy houses also in the north of Spain, you've got a lot, of, a lot of green landscape. It's quite wet and rainy, a bit like the UK. But in the south of Spain, there are some lovely houses and flats. And more often than not, they are painted in very light colours, such as white or um, a bright light blue or yellow. And that's to reflect the heat. OK, using those six pictures, we have Photo A, B, C, D, E and F. I would like you to pause the video and work out the answers for green, amber and red. So which is a house or a flat? Identify the adjectives. Remember they are describing words. And red, where is the house or the flat? Pause the video, go back to the worksheet and complete the answers. Brilliant, welcome back. So the answers we were looking for for green include photos A, B, E and F are houses and we can tell that by looking at the photo and photos C and D are flats. We can also tell this because of the vocabulary. Una casa is a house and un piso is a flat. Amber, identifying the adjectives. We should have found bonita, antigua, cómodo, pequeño, grande, moderna. Notice how these two end in a no? That links back to the fact that we've got masculine and feminine to deal with. So una casa is feminine, hence una casa bonita, una casa antigua, and a flat is masculine. Un piso cómodo, un piso pequeño. And the answers for red included the following. So A is in the mountains, 
Got a cognate here, Montaña, mountains. B, a town, Pueblo. C, a city, Ciudad. D, the coast, Costa, another cognate there, near cognate. Campo, being the countryside. You could try and remember that by thinking about camping in the countryside. And then F, desierto for desert. So again, we've got a near cognate there. Lovely. So we've got a question and the start of an answer. What do you think these mean? Any ideas? Okay, so donde esta? Where is it? And esta en? It is in. So we're talking about our location now. So could you please repeat after me? I expect to hear beautiful pronunciation. Esta en la montaña. Esta en un pueblo. Esta en una ciudad. Esta en la costa. Esta en el campo. Esta en el desierto. Perfecto, chicos. Habláis muy bien. Me gusta mucho. OK, moving on. You can always refer to this back in your knowledge organizers. That will be module four. So your next task. This ideally would be a speaking task, but let me explain how you are going to do it. If you happen to have a die at home, go and grab one now and pause the video. If you don't, do not worry. What you're going to do is you are going to answer these questions that are in black and create three small dialogues. So imagine these questions in black is person one and the answers in green are what you would respond. So we've got the question here. ¿Cómo es tu casa o tu piso? What is your house or flat like? And we are responding with vivo en una casa antigua. So I live in a house old. Or as we would say, I live in an old house. ¿Dónde está? We know that means where is it? And you've got to tell me where it is. You can choose from this line here if you want to talk about a house or a flat. From this row here, you're going to decide whether or not it's bonito, moderno, comodo, pequeño, antiguo, grande. Make sure you're choosing the correct adjective endings for these ones. And number three from this row, this is the location. If you've got a die, you throw it three times. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. First throw, you write the number down. Second throw, write the number. Third row, write the, the number. And that would be your dialogue. Give it a go. Pause the video. Write your dialogues in the worksheet. If you're not too sure, don't worry about it. You could always just practice your pronunciation. OK, guys, so a key part of our learning objective is to use the verb estar, which means to be. Hmm, that seems a bit weird. We've just seen ser, which means to be, and now we've got estar, which means to be. Don't worry, we're going to cover that next lesson. At the moment, we are just focusing on estar, and that's when you are talking about the location of something or someone. It is irregular in the present tense. That's why we've got this little snippet here for you to have a look. And it's also on page five of your module four knowledge organizers. However, if you want to say where someone is from, you're not talking about their location. You're talking about their nationality. So in this case, you are going to be using the verb ser. So my example here is mi casa está en España. My house is in Spain. I'm talking about a country. That's a location. So therefore, I need to say está because it is. 
pero, but, soy de Inglaterra. I'm now talking about where I'm actually from. I'm from England, so I need to say I am from. Soy de Inglaterra. Using this idea, guys, I would like you to give this a go. So imagine this is a take five exercise that we would have in class. Do use page five of your knowledge organizers, your fourth one. And you have got to decide if we're going to go for esta or es, estoy or soy. This is, remember, location and where we're from. So, for example, mi casa, we're talking about the house. Esta or es en el campo? It's going to be esta. Y estoy soy de Inglaterra. If we think back to our example down here at the bottom, it's going to be soy. So, esta and soy. See if you can give the rest of them a go by yourself. And your challenge is to have a look and see what names of the cities and countries are mentioned. Off you go. Okay, muy bien. So, the answers for number one, as we discussed, were esta and soy, because my house is in the countryside and I am from England. Number two, no vivo en el campo, por eso mi casa está en la ciudad. If we break it down, the sentence reads, I do not live in the countryside, therefore, nice connective for you, por eso, therefore, my house is in the city. So we're talking about location here, so it's got to be esta. Right, bit more of a complicated one here. We've got two choices because we've got two questions. So, estoy o soy de México. México, hmm, that's a country. So, but I'm saying de before that. So I must be from Mexico. Soy de México. Y mi familia y yo vivimos. And my family and I, we live in a flat that is in the mountains. So we know it's a flat. We go on to talk about the location, Las Montañas. So it's going to be esta. Number four, mi hermano le gusta hacer surf y su casa está en la costa. Can we find the location in sentence number four? Yes, we can. It's at the end, la costa. So it's going to be esta again. Number five, el piso de mis padres, my parents' flat. No está, no es en el desierto, porque están, son de Roma. Okay, let's focus on the first bit. Can we find a location? Yes, we can. Desierto, so it's going to be esta. And now we're talking about a country and a city. So that must be where they are from. Go to page five, module four, knowledge organizer. It's got to be song because we're talking about their nationality. Excellent. If you found that one a bit tricky, not a problem. Let me know how you did. Smiley face, sad face on your worksheet. And the challenge, the cities and countries. So we had England, Mexico, Rome and Italy. OK, guys, your last task for today's lesson ¿Qué hay en la foto? Our favourite question. What is there in the photo? You've got a photo here of a family, house, you've got the location, and what I'd like you to do is describe it. You can describe it either in bullet point form, so one sentence, two sentences, three sentences, or you can make it into more of a paragraph with full sentences using connectors, so we could have Y, pero, también, además. Positive and negative structures. Don't keep saying I for there is. You could say no I, as in there is not. And give some justified opinions. So you've got an example down here. Creo que, I believe that. And then we could expand it. Make sure you're telling me por qué. Because, porque es, because it is. 
Have a look at this structure down here as well to support you. This is all on the worksheet. And remember, la casa está en, pero la casa es moderna. Location with esta and describing what it's like if it's modern, es. If you're with myself, Miss Henton, can you please upload your work to Teams? Otherwise, follow the instructions of your other teachers. Muchas gracias, chicos. Hasta luego.